everyone. I have a prenatal mobility class for you today that is focused on labor prep. Now, everything we're gonna do throughout this flow, it feels good regardless of what stage of pregnancy you're at, but it was made with the back half of the third trimester in mind as we are approaching our due date. So we're gonna do a lot of work to open up through the pelvis and the pelvic floor and the hip joint. For equipment, we are going to use a yoga block. Now, optional, but if you're using a hard cork yoga block, we'll be kneeling on it at some point and it's uncomfortable. You also might want a towel or a blanket. You can put it over the yoga block and then it just makes it a little more comfortable to kneel on. So optional, but can be nice to have. We're gonna start down on the mat and then we'll finish with just a couple standing moves. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nicole. I'm a stop train Pilates instructor and a pregnancy and postpartum corrective exercise specialist. So you're in good hands today. However, you, I'm not there in the room with you. So you first and foremost are gonna to listen to your doctor and listen to your body. If anything's not feeling right, you're feeling pain, dizzy, lightheaded, you're going to stop. All right, so let's get right into this mobility flow. So we are gonna start with the block under our right knee. So I'm gonna to turn to face the side here. So we have our right knee on the block. We're gonna be in a tabletop position and we have our left knee down on the floor. So right away, we've brought ourselves into this internally rotated hip position on the right side. Our hips are open slightly to the right because it is elevated. Now from here, I want you to lean over to the right a little bit. So we're really getting into this hip and we're gonna move with our breath, doing a bit of a cat-cow, finding a posterior tilt and then opening back up. So on your exhale, it's out through the mouth, hug your bump up and in, draw the tailbone under, rounding the spine up towards the ceiling. And then as you inhale, you can kind of flare that tailbone up a little bit, gaze shifts up, find some spinal extension. Exhale, round it up. Now we're moving through the whole spine, but I really want you to focus on this pelvic movement in the lumbar spine, okay? Tucking the tailbone under as best you can, and then letting the back of that pelvis open up. We've really shifted our weight over to the right, focusing on moving within this right hip joint, in this slightly internally rotated position. Give me one more like this. And then I just want you to elongate the spine through neutral, but keep this knee on the block. Now I want you to tuck your left toes under. On an exhale, we're gonna engage through our core so you'll feel the lift of the pelvic floor. You'll hug your baby bump up and in, engaging through the deep core. And once you feel that brace of the core, I just want you to lift that left knee up, leveling off through the hips. And then as you inhale, drop the left knee back down so we find internal rotation in the right hip. We exhale, connect to the core, and we come through parallel. Little internal rotation, exhale, lift it up. So this is a small controlled movement, the pelvis rotating around that right thigh bone. And we're also connecting to breath and core. Twice more. Last time. Lower that left knee down and I want you to walk your left hand into center. On an inhale, we're gonna pull our right elbow up towards the ceiling, finding some thoracic rotation. So rotating open through the mid spine and then lowering it down. Shift your weight over into that right hip a little bit. You can untuck the left toes now if you'd like. Twisting open through the mid spine and close it off. We're gonna hold the twist open. So next time you twist it open, hold the twist and you can bring your hand to your hip. Now from here, we're gonna go back into the cat cow that we started with. Shift your weight over to the right a little bit. And in this rotation, let's exhale, draw the tailbone under. Inhale, you can let it come into that little bit of a posterior tilt. Really focusing on the pelvis here. So exhale, think of pulling your hip bones towards your bottom ribs. Inhale, open. I 
I know it can feel a little funky, and especially if you're really late in pregnancy, the bump can almost feel like a little bit of a hindrance, but being able to move your pelvis like this is going to help with labor so much just to open up through the layers of your pelvic floor. Twice more. Last time. Neutral through the spine, untwist through the torso. And we're now going to tuck the toes under for a second on that right side. And we're gonna take our left leg and I want you to send it out to the left straight. So we're in this um, sort of tabletop on the right side, left leg extended out. So you get a little bit of opening through the inner thighs. From here, you're gonna rock back and forward. It doesn't have to be a big movement. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, little rock forward, opening up through the inner thighs. I like doing this with my knee elevated on the block. I find that if I do it with um, my knee on the ground, it's a little bit too intense for me and it creates a little bit of pelvic pain. But if I elevate this knee, it just helps keep my hips a little more level and I find that it feels really good. One more rock back. Bring it forward so that shoulders are over the wrist and then we're going to move in this hip joint, moving the hips internal, external rotation. So I want you to think of taking your left hip and lifting it up a little bit so that we find external rotation in this right hip joint. And now let's think of dropping that left hip down, bringing it over to the right just a little bit. I know in this position, you're not gonna get a ton of internal rotation and that is fine. Just peel the hip open and close it off. So left hip lifts and drops, moving the pelvis. Now, if you're not really sure if you're doing this right, I'm gonna to turn to face the back so that you can see. I know this is like not a good view. Keep doing what you're doing, but I think this is a good view to demonstrate what we're doing with the hips, even if it's not really an angle I want on the internet, but that's okay. <laughs> So you'll see how I'm dropping the hip down and I'm peeling it open. Really exploring that hip joint. All right, I'm gonna turn back to the side. Hopefully that helped and that wasn't for nothing. <laughs> Give me just a couple more. All right, and then from here, I want you to come up into a full kneel and I want you to step this left foot forward. Right knee is still on the block. Again, if this is getting uncomfortable, have a towel over the block and it'll make it way more comfortable. All right, so we're in a split lunge position. Feet are hips distance apart, parallel. From here, we're going to find that posterior tilt again. We're doing a lot of that. That is on purpose, okay? It's really good birth prep work. So as we exhale, lift to the pelvic floor, engage to the abdominal wall, hugging the bump up and in. And I want you to think of drawing your hip bones up towards your bottom ribs as you tuck the tailbone under. You should feel a stretch through the front of your hip flexor as you do that. Inhale, release it. Exhale, posterior pelvic tilt, tuck the tailbone under, feel an opening through the hip flexor. Inhale, release it. Now, normal for your glutes to fire a little bit on this, but I want you to think of initiating it with the core, with that exhale and the deep core and that pull of the hip bones up towards your bottom ribs. We're gonna hold this posterior pelvic tilt. So next time you come into it, exhale, elongate through the lower back, tailbone tucks under, hold it. If you don't already feel a stretch to the front of your hip flexor, I want you to lunge forward a little bit. And then we're gonna do a side bend. So we're gonna take our right arm, sweep it up and over, side bend over to the left, and then just bring it upright. Inhale it over, exhale it up. So we're opening up through the hip flexors here, working on that posterior tilt, and getting this nice side body stretch. Next time you go up and over, let's just hold it here for a few breaths. 
Now, I prefer dynamic movement to static stretching, especially during pregnancy because ligament laxity has increased. I find that around the joints, you want more of a strength focus than a stretching focus. But as we get closer to our due date, adding in some stretching and some holds can be really nice and beneficial. All right, let's come up and out of it. We're gonna shift the hips back and we're gonna do that whole thing from the top. So we will move the block over so that it's now going to be under our left knee. And we're just gonna start all that work from the top. So let's bring our left knee onto the block, right knee is down. Your knees are hips distance apart. If that's really uncomfortable, you can go a smidge wider, but I don't want you to go too wide through the knees because I want you to be able to really shift over to the left. Spread out through your hands, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, and then just shift over really into that left hip a bit. We're going to move with our breath, finding that cat-cow position. So as you exhale, round the spine up to the ceiling, tailbone draws under. Inhale, tailbone can flare up. We open through the chest. So we're slightly internally rotated within that left hip because we have elevated that knee. Internal rotation helps us open up through the back of the pelvis. External rotation helps us open through the front. So both are important, but we tend to kind of automatically, especially as we get later in pregnancy, be a little externally rotated to make space for the bump. So it's really internal rotation I wanna emphasis because it's not a position that you may naturally come into very often. Give me one more here. And then elongate the spine through center and I want you to tuck your right toes under. Make sure you're pressing the mat away so we're stable through the shoulders, length through the back of the neck. On your exhale, connect to the core. And then we lift that right knee up, level with the left. So hips are level. Inhale, drop the knee down, allowing yourself to come into that internal rotation. Exhale, we lift. We got breath work, deep core, controlled movement within the hip joint. Twice more. You're gonna lower the right knee down and then you're gonna walk your right hand in a few inches so it's centered. And we're gonna come into that thoracic rotation. As you inhale, I want you to draw the left elbow up, opening up through the mid spine and square it back off. Inhale, open rotation and bring it back. Next time you come into that twist, I want you to hold the open twist. You can bring your left hand to your hip. Now staying in this thoracic rotation, let's go back to the cat cow. Shift your weight over into that left hip. Exhale, draw the tailbone under. Inhale, find a little extension. So really focus on the lower spine and the pelvis moving as you do this. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. Keep shifting the weight over to the left side. Really emphasizing the movement of this left hip joint. Give me three. Two. One. Elongate the spine, untwist through the spine, hands can come back to shoulders distance apart, and you, you'll probably wanna tuck the left toes under. Now let's take our right leg straight out to the side. From here, you want your hips pretty level to the floor, and then we're just gonna rock back and forward. It doesn't have to be a huge rock back and forward. My range of motion is really limited in this. Oh. 
If it is causing any pelvic pain, try bending the right knee and rocking back and forward like that. And that can help to just make it a little less intense. We're gonna do that kind of funky hip shift in this position. Think of peeling the right hip open and lowering it down into a little rock back for one. Bring it forward and now let's do that hip shift. So think of picking your right hip up and then dropping your right hip down. And this may feel really tight. It might feel a little sticky and that's okay. It doesn't have to be a huge movement. Dropping it down and up. Again, if doing it with a straight leg is uncomfortable, give me a little bend to the right knee and try that and see if that feels better. We'll come up to that kneeling position in three, two, one. So let's come upright to that kneeling position and we're gonna step our right foot forward. You want your feet hips distance apart. And from here, we're gonna work on that posterior pelvic tilt. So on our exhale, you're going to engage to the core. You're gonna think, draw the hip bones, towards your bottom ribs as the tailbone tucks under. And as you do this, you'll feel a opening through that left hip flexor. Exhale, draw it under. Keep going, I'm just gonna grab my blanket. On this side, my knee is feeling a little cranky. Ah, oh, much better, there we go. Exhale, draw it under. We're going to hold that posterior tilt. So next time you lengthen through the lower back and draw that tailbone under, I want you to hold. If you don't feel a hip flexor stretch, press your hips forward a little bit. We're gonna do a fluid side bend. So the left arm reaches up, side bend over to the right. Exhale, bring it up, right? Holding that posterior tilt and that opening through the hip flexors. Next time you go into that side bend, just hold here for a few breaths. You may need to press the hips forward a little bit if you're not feeling it. And let's bring it up tall. Now from here, we're going to come to standing to finish up class. If you are like me and put the blanket over the block, we are going to ditch it. We're gonna finish with just a couple things, okay? Almost done here. So we are going to bring the right foot onto the block. Um, yeah, this is a good, I'm trying to decide what direction to face, this is fine. All right, right foot is going to be on the block, bent right knee. Now take your left foot and step it back. You want your feet hips distance apart. You want your toes kind of in line with the back of the block. You may need to adjust as we get into this to find the distance that, distance that works best for you. But this is a good staggered stance to start. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're gonna straighten through this right leg as we send the hips back. You'll bend into the left knee as you do it, and we're gonna rotate our torso over to the right. So as you inhale, we're gonna shift the hips back, straightening this front leg, rotate over to it. So you should feel a nice stretch here, and we get this opening through the back of the pelvis, finding that lovely internal rotation we've been emphasizing, and then just bring it up. Straightening into the back leg, bending into the front knee. Slide the hip back on your inhale. Exhale, bring it up. Now, as you do this, try not to dump all your weight over to the left. So really think of keeping your weight shifted over to this right side. So we really open up into that right hip and up. Back and rotate. Oh, this feels so good. A couple more than we'll hold. 
So next time you take it back, I want you to hold. So you slide the hips back. We've rotated to the right. And let's just hold here. Another thing you can do is you can hold onto a wall or a door frame with your hands and really lean back into it. If you're not feeling a deep enough opening, that can help. And we're straight through the leg, but let's not hyperextend through the knee. So just think little tiny invisible softness there. Opening up through this hip joint. If you're gonna rest your hands on a thigh, rest it on the left thigh, the bent knee, not the straight leg, okay? That'll put pressure on the knee, we don't want that. Do same thing, other side in three, two, and one, bring it up. Okay, so we're just gonna switch sides. So now your left foot is going to be on the block, right foot is on the floor, feet are hips distance apart, and you want the toes just behind the back end of the block. So front knee is bent, back leg is straight to start. As you inhale, we're gonna switch that. Straighten the left leg, bend the right knee, slide this left hip back, rotate over to the left. Exhale it up and square. Inhale, pull that left hip back and up. We're gonna hold it back in three. Two. Next time you take it back, hold it. So the left leg is straight, we're pulling the left hip back. We've rotated over to the left slightly. Make sure we haven't shifted over to the right. If you need to put a hand on the thigh, put it on the right thigh. And we're just gonna breathe here. Think of directing your inhale into the back of the left pelvis. A little tiny unlock through that left knee for me. And again, you can always hang onto a door frame or a wall or a pole if you wanna try deepening the stretch. Really stay in that rotation, so keep sliding the left hip back. You're here for three, for two, and one. Bring it up and let's just center off real quickly. We won't need the block for this. We're gonna bring our feet about shoulders distance apart, maybe a smidge wider, and we're gonna find internal rotation. So think of wrapping the thighs inward. You're gonna bend the knees and we're gonna hinge the hips back. And to start here, I should probably turn to face the side to give you a better view. To start, let's just move in and out of that. So just slide the hips back and bring them up a couple times like this and then we'll finish with a hold. Opening up through the back of the pelvic floor and up. Next time we come into the hinge, we're gonna hold and this is where we will finish up this class. So slide those hips back. Now in this position, you can play around with the traction your feet are creating. So if you think of pressing your feet into the mat and then pulling them wide as if you were trying to rip the mat in half, you may notice how does that change the sensation in the back of your hips. You could also try the opposite. You can try creating that traction inward with your feet. I love that traction out. And again, your feet aren't actually moving. You're just pulling creating that intentional engagement. You're here for three, for two, and one feet point forward, stand it up. Awesome job, let's just finish with a couple breaths together. If you can be wide, inhale, you can sway side to side, arms come up, exhale, let those arms fall. Again, inhale, arms up. I like to sway it side to side. Exhale, release them. All right, I hope you're feeling good after that flow. Oh, I am, my hips feel so good after all of that work. 
So again, great class to do anytime. We got feel good movement in there for everyone, but especially awesome to do this type of work when you're around 35 weeks ish nearing your due date. You can do, I'm gonna do a couple more classes like this using different props, um, but doing this a few times a week as you get closer to labor, great way to kind of prep the pelvis. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for moving with me today and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.